In this short video tutorial, we're going to consider the arterial supply of the head and neck structures. The first artery that we need to concern ourselves with is the common carotid artery, of which there are two, one on the right and one on the left. These arteries um, essentially arise from the arch of the aorta, which is here. The left common carotid artery arises directly from the arch, before running up the length of the neck, whereas the right common carotid artery um, arises from a structure called the brachiocephalic trunk. This is uh, sometimes known as the brachiocephalic artery, and it is uh, essentially the first branch from the arch of the aorta. So from the brachiocephalic trunk, uh, we see it uh, terminate by dividing into the subclavian artery, which will obviously go on to uh, supply the upper limb, and the right common carotid artery, which will uh, run up the length of the neck on the opposite side to where we saw the left common carotid artery. So the left and right common carotid artery will ascend up through the neck within a structure known as the carotid sheath. And at about the level of um, C4, uh, which correlates with the um, upper margin of the thyroid cartilage, we see the common carotids um, also terminating into their two terminal branches. So if we look at uh, the same sort of point here again, but uh, on this larger image and looking from the lateral aspect, here we're looking onto the to the right side of the neck. So we're viewing uh, the brachiocephalic trunk or artery just here. Uh, we're seeing it terminate into the right uh, subclavian and the right common carotid artery just here. And again, um, at about the level of the, um, the fourth cervical vertebrae, we're seeing the common carotid artery terminate um, and continue as um, an external uh, carotid artery and an internal carotid artery here that's uh, just been cut at that point. What this image also demonstrates is that there are a number of um, branches from the subclavian artery that are important for supplying some of the other structures in the head and neck. The first of these is the vertebral artery, which we see here. Um, this uh, initially runs in front of the seventh cervical vertebrae before then entering uh, into a, a bony channel that's created by a series of these transverse uh, foramina um, as the artery ascends up the neck through the uh, cervical vertebrae before running intracranially um, through the foramen magnum where it joins um, an anastomosis of other um, arterial blood vessels uh, creating uh, ultimately the circle of Willis. The second branch of the subclavian to draw your attention to is the thyrocervical uh, trunk. And while this gives uh, a number of branches, uh, the one I want to uh, particularly draw your attention to um, is this inferior thyroid artery, uh, which we can see uh, it's quite torturous course to reach the inferior part of the thyroid gland here. And while it's obviously supplying um, arterial blood to the thyroid gland, um, it has an important relationship to uh, a nerve known as the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And the recurrent laryngeal nerve is a branch of the vagus nerve um, that's crucial in uh, supplying um, motor and uh, sensory innervation to uh, structures of the larynx. Thus, um, in, in surgical operations relating to the thyroid gland, um, when um, the surgeon may need to uh, ligate the um, artery to stem uh, bleeding during the operation, um, it's very important that um, uh, they don't inadvertently also damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve um, at the same time. The other branches of the uh, subclavian, uh, just for the sake of completeness, um, are the costocervical um, trunk, and the uh, internal um, thoracic or sometimes internal mammary, uh, as it's called. And we won't really consider them uh, further uh, for the purposes of this video tutorial. So let us now consider the branches of the external carotid artery. The external carotid artery and its branches um, provide the main arterial supply to the scalp, face and the neck. The internal carotid artery, once it um, arises at the bifurcation of the uh, common carotid, um, ascends through the neck without giving any branches at all. Instead, it will run through the um, base of the skull uh, in the carotid canal and uh, ultimately uh, give its branches um, when it's within the intracranial cavity. 
So considering the external carotid artery now and its eight branches, um, we're going to relate to a different image of the um, head and neck lateral supply, which helps us to better visualise some of these branches. So here we have an image looking um, from the left aspect of the um, head and the neck, so from the opposite side um, from the previous image. And what we see here is, um, see the carotid bifurcation and the external carotid artery continuing and giving rise to um, its many branches. Its eight branches can be helpfully remembered by a number of different mnemonics. Perhaps one that's most appropriate to comment on in the terms of this video is some anatomists like freaking out poor medical students. So each of these in turn uh, relate to um, one of the eight branches of the external carotid. So starting with the, the first, the S, this relates to the superior thyroid artery, which is just here. The superior thyroid artery is the first branch of the external carotid artery that we see arising um, almost uh, immediately after the uh, common carotid artery bifurcates. And the superior thyroid artery uh, is important for um, bringing arterial blood to the uh, thyroid gland here. Our next artery relates to the A, which is the ascending pharyngeal artery, and we find that just here. So it's a small branch um, that's just arising and heading superiorly, just there. We then come to the L, which relates to the uh, lingual artery, uh, which we see just here, that will run um, essentially into the um, oral cavity in the tongue. And we have the facial artery, which is um, the main uh, arterial supply to the structures of the face. And if you feel very carefully just uh, on the inferior border of the uh, mandible or your jaw uh, and just in front of the um, superior margin of the masseter muscle, which we'd find here, you may just be able to palpate the, uh, the pulse of the, uh, of the facial artery as it's curving around uh, the, uh, the, the mandible here. So next we come to the um, occipital artery, which is um, just here. Uh, and this is a, a branch that will again arise from the um, external carotid artery but will run uh, around the posterior aspect of the of the skull um, helping to form part of the rich anastomosis um, of uh, vessels supplying blood to the scalp. Another artery that will um, also um, having arisen from the external carotid artery um, run posteriorly behind the ear um, to also uh, join in uh, supplying the, the skin of the scalp, and that's our posterior uh, auricular artery. The last two branches um, are essentially uh, the, the terminating branches of the external carotid artery, and these relate to the um, maxillary artery, which we see arising here, and the superficial temporal artery, which we see uh, arising here, and um, running up um, over the um, area of the, the temple and the lateral aspect of the skull. So maxillary artery and superficial temporal artery are the terminating branches of the external carotid artery uh, and one of the, sorry, two of the um, eight branches of the external carotid artery, which we've listed here. A number of these branches um, you'll have met before when learning the um, anatomy of the scalp. And we've already uh, alluded to or mentioned um, the involvement of the uh, posterior auricular um, and the occipital artery uh, coming up to um, join a rich anastomosis uh, of oil blood vessels, um, including obviously the superficial temporal artery. Um, and while all of these arise from the external carotid artery, we will also have um, branches that have arisen from the internal carotid artery um, intracranially that will have um, ultimately arisen uh, from the uh, orbit to run up the front of the skull, and that would have been the suprotrochlear and the supraorbital arteries. And these would have run within the um, dense connective tissue layer of the scalp to join with the rich anastomosis from um, these uh, particular branches from the um, external carotid artery.